All right, so this is the lecture I said I would give to you guys regarding development, and I'm going to try and give you the quick version of background in development of animals, and these are terms and concepts that we're going to refer to throughout the rest of the semester. So if you begin with the very first step, so the union of egg and sperm uh, results in a zygote. After that initial zygote, that single cell forms, it will go through several different cell divisions that are referred to as cleavage stages, at least in the very beginning. And so when, e when the cell divides uh, and duplicates itself, those initial cells are referred to as blastomeres. Now, as it happens, there are two different types of cleavage. You can have what's indicated here, which is called radial cleavage. And as you can see, you have the two cell stage here four cells, and then eight cells. And what's key here is to notice that the four cells on top are directly over and symmetrical to the cells on the bottom. This is in contrast to what you get with spiral cleavage. As you can see here, the cells, even at the two cell stage, are almost a little bit twisted. And you can see that further in the four cell stage, but what's really key is what you're seeing here in the eight cell stage. So at that point, the four cells on top, notice that they're sort of off center from the ones on the bottom. So instead of being directly one on top of the other, these guys are sitting on top of the intersection between the two at the bottom. So there are consequences to being either radi or having radial cleavage versus spiral cleavage, and I'll show you that in just a moment. The type of cleavage, whether it's radial or spiral, it is a synapomorphy. It's a key characteristic that diagnoses two different groups of organisms that I'll introduce to you in a moment. Okay, I'm going to put the two pictures up there because I want to show you a little bit more. So there's a consequence to this cleavage type. If, you're, if you exhibit radial cleavage, you then engage or, or exhibit what's called regulative development. And what that means is that as early as the four cell stage, if you were to split off one of these cells, it would continue to divide and it would form a fully formed adult and it would be a normal adult. And what they're showing you here are um, larvae from a sea urchin. I know they look like freaks here, but this is what real sea urchin embryos look like. And so these are what are called plutei larvae. And what it's trying to indicate to you is that each of these blastomeres, if you were to separate them off, they would form normal, um, fully functional um, uh, larvae that would then become normal adults. This is in contrast to what happens with spiral cleavage. If you exhibit spiral cleavage, you then exhibit what's called mosaic development. And the example here is just a, st a stylized mollusk. And what they're showing you here is what the normal larval form looks like for a mollusk. If you were to try and peel off one of these blastomeres, it would continue to develop and, and to divide, but notice that the larvae are uh, defective here. And so what happens is, is that you don't get fully formed adults. They end up dying. So you cannot split off the blastomeres if you have mosaic development. But if you have regula regulative development, if a blastomere happens to get peeled off, you'll get normal adults. Okay, let's go a few steps further into development. So here's the zygote. The zygote undergoes many cleavage stages, and so it, it divides and divides and divides until ultimately what you form is this hollow ball of cells called a blastula. So what's indicated here is they've taken the hollow ball and in this diagram they've split it right down the center and that's what you're seeing here. So it's, it's a ball of cells indicated in blue with this center that's um, fluid filled. So this stage is a really key feature in development. What happens next is you take that hollow ball of cells and you basically pooch it up from the bottom. And what you see here in the next step, so this, this stage is called gastrulation. This is a very important developmental stage. What it gets you are those germ cells. So I've been referring to these in lecture, germ cells, developing from germ cells. Well, here's your germ cells. Indicated on the outside in blue, this is your ectoderm. So this is the out, ultimately the outside of the body. In yellow are these cells that are the endoderm or endodermal cells. And this is going to form your gut tube all the way from your mouth all the way straight through to your anus. So after gastrulation, this endoderm, this little pocket on the inside of the cells, it's going to go all the way through this um, blastula until it forms the complete gut tube. And at that point, three different things can happen. 
it can continue on. And I'm going to show you on the next slide how you get these red cells. These are your mesoderm, the middle layer. So in this case, you're talking about animals that are triploblastic and they have three cell layers, ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. In these organisms that they're showing you straight across here, the mesoderm completely fills the inside of the body cavity. So it's in between the ectodermal and endodermal layers. If that happens, then you have no true body cavities, and those or organisms are referred to as acelomate. So the body cavity on the inside is referred to as a coelom. Um, but in this case, these organisms have no coelom. Alternatively, you could have what's referred to as a pseudocelum or a false body cavity. And what you're seeing here is this mesodermal layer. This is in red. And it's clearly lining the outside of the ectoderm, or sorry, the inside of the ectoderm inside the body. But it's not actually coating the endoderm, just the ectoderm. So it does form a little cavity inside the body, but the, but the body cavity is not completely lined by the mesoderm. So this is referred to as a false body cavity or pseudocelum. And so these animals are pseudocelomates. Then the, the third form is when you have the mesoderm that completely surrounds the body cavity in the body, and that's a true coelom. So these are referred to as coelomates. And they're showing you an example of an earthworm here. So you can be acelomate, pseudocelomate, or coelomate. Let me show you a little bit more about that. So just as another look, so this is an acelomate, and in this case it's a flatworm. If you cut it through the middle, what you see is ectoderm on the outside in blue, endoderm on the inside in yellow, and again, that's your gut tube. And then notice that the entire inside is full of these parenchyma cells or the mesoderm. So there's no body cavity in here whatsoever. So these are acelomates. Pseudocelomates, in this case, an, a nematode worm is an example. If you cut it through, ectoderm on the outside in blue, endoderm on the inside in yellow. And here's the mesoderm, but notice it's only lining just inside the ectoderm. So you do have an empty body cavity here, and that's where all the organs are going to be sitting. But, they're, but the cavity is not completely lined by the mesoderm, so it's not actually lining around here, around the endoderm. So this is considered a false body cavity and is called a pseudocelum. Here, using an example with an earthworm, if you cut it through ectoderm on outside, endoderm on the inside, and this is what a true salomic cavity looks like. So you have these mesenteries that form in the middle of the body, and then notice you have mesoderm on the outside, or sorry, uh, lining the ectoderm, and notice it's right here on the endoderm as well. So you have a cavity that's completely lined by the mesoderm. That's a true coelom, so these organisms that have this are called coelomates. Now, whether you're acelomate, pseudocelomate, or coelomate um, is, is a characteristic that has evolved multiply um, over evolutionary time. And so it's not a um, synapomorphy for a group of, or for large groups of organisms. Um, so you don't find um, monophyletic groups of coelomate organisms. Now, there's two different ways that you can make a salomic cavity, and I'll show you that on the next slide. You can develop these via what's called schizocele or enterocele. Um, what I'm showing you at the top are just different slices through um, um, gastrula cells, but kind of ignore those for the moment. What I want you to focus on is here's an image of uh, an early stage um, gastrula. So you got um, ectoderm on the outside, endoderm on the inside, and right at the intersection of these two layers are your mesodermal cells that are forming. What then happens is that they, they migrate up into the body, they make these um, pockets inside the body, and then they expand out to form the true salomic cavities. This form of uh, developing the coelom is referred to, again, as schizocele. Alternatively, you can do it a different way. The mesodermal cells can actually form outpocketings from the endoderm. They pinch off. They form little uh, cavities inside the body, just as you saw with schizocele, and ultimately they form a complete coelom. So this is two different ways that you can form a salomic cavity, and when you get to the end point, you can't tell just from looking at the organism whether those cavities formed via schizocele or enterocele. You would have to have observed it in early stage embryos. 
Okay. What I'm showing you here on this tree, this is a tree I showed you in class, and this is the roadmap for the whole semester. And what I want to highlight here is in yellow are all of the organisms that exhibit spiral cleavage and um, um, are what are referred to as protostomes. And in blue are all these organisms that are referred to as deuterostomes. You're probably asking me why am I bringing this up? Okay, it completely and totally corresponds to all of the development I've been showing you. So protostomes and deuterostomes are characterized by four major features all having to do with development. So these, you want to commit all of these to memory. So here's that um, um, blastula that's just gone through gastrulation, and here's what's referred to as the blastopore. That's the opening of that pocket that forms. So if the blastopore forms the mouth first, and then as it moves through, it then later forms the anus second, then you're a protostome. Deuterostomes, that opening forms the anus first, and then the mouth forms secondarily at the end of the tube. If your cleavage is spiral, you're a protostome. Deuterostomes have radial cleavage. Salomic cavities for protostomes form by schizocele, where the cells are here at the intersections. Um, in deuterostomes, they form by outpocketing, so by enterocele. Protostomes have mosaic embryos, so remember, if you pull off one of these blastomeres, development is arrested and you get these abnormal larvae. Um, whereas deuterostomes have regulative development. So if you pull off one of their blastomeres, it'll continue to divide and it'll be completely fine and normal. So um, there are many different ways that people have proposed to sort of memorize um, which characteristics are protostomes and which are deuterostomes. And if you have any really good ideas for these, please do pass them on to me. I'm going to show you a couple that a student many years ago um, de developed for himself, and he thought that they would be helpful to others. So if you can memorize the order of the characters, so fate of the blastopore, type of cleavage, uh, salomic cavity formation, and then type of embryonic development, then uh, if you can commit those to memory, then just remember what each of the major features are then. Forms the mouth first, spiral, it's schizocele, and then mosaic. Put in front of it a P for protostome, so P-M-S-S-M. And then alternatively here, you have anus, radial, intercele, regulative. Put deuterostome in front of it, D-A-R-E-R. -E and here's a couple of mnemonic devices this student came up with. Practicals make some students mad. Do always remember extra credit. Clever and kind of catchy, but you have to remember that in the last word, it's actually the R and not the C. That might kind of stump you. Um, but that student proposed a second version. Please make some strawberry muffins. Dad always ruins them with extra raisins. Uh, I thought these were kind of clever. Um, I, would, I haven't actually come up with anything different myself, but I'm a huge fan of mnemonic devices, so hopefully these are helpful for you. They're a little campy, but sometimes that's what works the best. Uh, if you can come up with something better, man, please pass it on, because I love clever mnemonic devices. Okay, a couple other terms I want you to know to wrap this up. Metamerism. So this is a type of body plan characteristic that you find um, several times in the animal world. So metamerism is just a type of um, segmentation. So it's serial repetition of similar body segments along the longitudinal axis of the body. So what that basically means is you've got a particular body segment in your body and that segment is repeated many times over throughout the body. One example of this that we'll see is in earthworms, for example, where each of these little grooves in its body corresponds to a mesentery that's separating the body cavity, and actually every single segment in the body looks virtually identical. That gets further developed when we get to the arthropods. So you still see them exhibiting metamerism, and you can see it in the segments here in the, an in the posterior portion of the body. In the anterior portion of the body, some of those segments have been fused, and we'll talk about what's happening here in the carapace, but you can still see remnants of the metamerism in these um, serially repeated legs. You can also see this when you get up to the vertebrates as well. The vertebral column itself is an example of metamerism, so it's repeated segments, and in this case, repeated bone segments. And you can also see it exhibited here in the muscle cells. So there are different, uh, in the case of this particular stylized fish, you see muscle um, compartments that are serially repeated. 
Um, and actually, metamerism is a characteristic that is homoplastic. So you see it cropping up several different times in the animal world. And there's a consequence to this, which we'll talk about as we go along. Okay, I'm just going to wrap up the animal architecture here. And thanks for watching, and I hope this video was helpful to you.